everybody. So a few days ago, I uh, posted Meg The Stallion's live video in which she said that she wasn't able to release any new music. So basically she was saying that she was being held hostage by her label 1501 and 300, that she was signed to two different people and that she wasn't able to release any new music. And of course, the hashtag Free The Stallion, Free Meg The Stallion went viral. And shortly thereafter, um, Meg The Stallion filed a temporary straining order against 1501 Entertainment, as well as Carl Crawford, who, of course, heads up. He's the CEO of 1501. Now, when I first saw that to my, you know, and, and basically her live was a reaction to what Carl Crawford had posted prior to that. So basically... Carl Crawford posted up a picture with him and Jay Prince, who is big, of course, in the industry. He's big in Houston. And a lot of people saw it as a threat. So because a lot of people like, oh my gosh, he's threatening her. They're threatening her. Meg went and filed a temporary restraining order against Carl Crawford. And also a judge um, basically said she can now release music. All right. But this has gotten nastier. Since then, since Sunday, it's only Wednesday, this has got nastier. Now, when I first saw this whole thing, I thought to myself, poor Meg. All right, this young, naive girl didn't, you know, watch Unsung. She didn't watch the TLC story and she got herself into a bad deal. And all Jay-Z is trying to do is swoop in and save the day and get her out of a bad deal. Now, that was my initial reaction because sometimes when we like people and I like Meg, we tend to just still want to somehow justify, you know, whatever happened. We want to make sure that they are always on the right side of this. But after looking into this a little bit more and also reading a billboard interview that Carl Crawford did, I have to admit that I am no longer supporting Meg in this particular fight here. And I'm looking at Meg with a side eye because she has been inconsistent a few times. There's been some inconsistencies. And I know the Meg the Stallion fans aren't going to like this because, again, I like her too. But there have been some serious inconsistencies in her story. There's some holes in her story. I feel like now I've concluded for myself that Meg the Stallion used the sympathy card by going on IG Live and appealing to her 8 million followers. And now all of a sudden it's Carl Crawford is in the wrong. Now we know that the music industry is a dirty game. It's a dirty business. And you would think, again, this is a college educated woman. She touts herself as being super smart, right? And her mother was also a rapper, the, her, her late mother, God rest her soul. But even in all of that, Meg refuses to admit, for the most part, that she played herself. I mean, I'm looking at this a little differently and saying, did Carl Crawford play her or did Meg play herself? She basically admitted the other day that she didn't read the damn contract like she should have. You know, that the verbiage, and I admit that sometimes, you know, we, we get them student loans, we get house, uh, you know, um, promissory notes. We get all that stuff. A lot of that stuff is very difficult to understand, but at this day and age, there really isn't any excuse to not sit down with a lawyer and go over this stuff. It just isn't any excuse for it. And I feel like she was trying to play the sympathy card so that you guys would look away. So we would look away and say, Oh, well, poor her. You know, she just was so young. She was so naive. She didn't understand. And I just think at this point now, I understand that she was just playing us. It was just all a ploy to get people on her side so that it could be free Meg the Stallion so that she can go off and be with Rock Nation. But um, at the end of the day, a contract is a contract. And if you didn't read it, if you didn't understand it, then is that the fault of the people that uh, created the contract? Or is it your fault for not doing your due diligence? Now, like I said, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and read uh, the interview 
that Carl Crawford did with Billboard, and maybe some of you who are like, of course, siding with Meg will probably look at it a little differently too, because I have. Now this tweet is hard to read, but it was about a year ago because someone asked her, hope you don't sign a 360 um, cause your downfall could be soon. And she said, I'm very intelligent person. You will never have to worry about me putting myself in a situation I don't want to be in. And here we have it that Meg, it has come out that Meg is indeed signed to a 360. All right. Meg did that. I, and, and she wasn't 20 y'all. She was about 23 years old when this happened. So again, I say, based on everything that I've read and I'm going to show you here and, and have you listen to, whose fault is this? And I am saying, I don't necessarily think that this should fall at the feet of Carl Crawford. And he is getting hit pretty hard out here for something I don't necessarily think he deserves. I'm not saying that his hands are clean, completely clean, but I'm saying that more of this should fall at Meg's feet than people want to at least acknowledge. Now, um, before I read the Billboard interview, which I think is a, definitely a good read, and I'm going to uh, post the link uh, later on here down below in the comments, I'm going to go ahead and play this audio of Carl Crawford. This was about four months ago when the whole thing with Meg all of a sudden popping up with um, Jay-Z, with Rock Nation, happen and he's talking about the situation and then I'm going to get into the uh, interview that he recently did with uh, Billboard magazine because it talks a lot about the fact that you know it's been alleged out here that Meg was only paid fifteen thousand dollars for um, since she's been with them and uh, he breaks that down okay he breaks it down because if you hear that she, she only paid $15,000. You would be sitting here like, well, damn, they are robbing this girl blind. All right. But I think it's a, it's a bit more nuanced than that. And like I said, is that his fault or hers? So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and play this audio that Carl Crawford um, did about four months ago when he talked about, uh, he was on Slim Thug's podcast and he talks about the Meg the Stallion situation and the fact that, um, Rock Nation was trying to stronghold him or strong arm him, something not stronghold, strong arm him. Go ahead and take a listen to this, guys. I'll calculate as the person that's on side of you, um, you know, turning on you, you know what I'm saying? And when that happens, you know, all hell break loose. So for Megan, she just, she just, you know, kind of young, I think. And not, I don't know if she was thinking right or whatever, but when she went and got her lawyers, her lawyers came and threatened to sue me, you know what I'm saying? Take care, you know how they do, they try to come, threaten to sue you if you don't renegotiate and all that type of stuff. And, you know, basically, you know, come take everything, basically. Cause you know, they come in and normally a person can't defend themselves or fight back or something like that. And then you just end up giving it all, well, I don't even want to deal with it. So but in this case, I had to like stand firm because I know what I did in the beginning. I had to show receipts showing all the stuff that, you know, things that we've done in 1501 and provide all that, you know, for the lawyers and all that type of stuff. So, uh, you know, right now we're in a position where we just kind of try to renegotiate the contract deal to where both sides, you know, yeah, both sides are comfortable and we get back to, we get back to work, you know, but that's pretty much it. They, they wanted, they, she went to Rock Nation, hoping that Rock Nation would get out of the deal with me. That didn't work and we was just back to business. So that was um, Carl Crawford about four months ago when this whole thing came up with Meg, of course, like I said, popped up. She was taking a picture with Jay-Z and everybody's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, she's going to the Rock Nation. It was technically a management deal. But again, it was shady. It was shady. And a lot of people, again, don't want to admit that that was shady, what she did. Because again, you like Meg the Stallion. As I've stated, I like her too. I really, really like her. I like her a lot. I think she has a great personality. Uh, when I saw her, when I first saw her, I was like, this girl is going to become somebody. She's going to pop. But again, is this the fault of Carl Crawford? And why is this at his feet? Now, you might recall on her live, she said that she was signed to uh, 300 
as well as 1501. And she is, has a management deal with Rock Nation. So again, it's very nuanced. There's a lot of hands in the pot, a lot of hands in the pot that she knew were in the pot when she sat down and signed the deal. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and read this interview. So you guys have to bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and read this interview with, uh, that Carl Crawford did with, uh, Billboard, because I do think that it's, I think it's a really good interview. And I think after doing this, I think people will definitely look at Meg the Stallion, or you should look at her with a little bit of a side eye because she wasn't being truthful. She wasn't being all the way truthful here. So uh, Billboard asked him a few questions. They said, what was your initial reaction with Megan going on uh, Instagram Live and accusing your label or preventing her from dropping the music? And so Carl responds, he says, my initial reaction was, man, I can't believe this is serious. She just has so many holes in her story and it's almost on some delusional type stuff. The bubble of Hollywood and her 8 million followers has really clouded her head because the stuff that she's saying is not true. It's a whole lie. Nothing is true that she said. Me being greedy and taking money from her, that's crazy. I never tried to take nothing from her. The only thing we ever did was give, give, give. Now she fell for the oldest trick in the industry, the conquer and divide thing. Everybody in the industry knows this is what Jay-Z and Rock Nation do. They come in to find the smallest things wrong with the problem because they aren't, there, there weren't any problems before she left. And then she says that I didn't want to negotiate. Okay, tell everybody your definition of negotiating. Your definition is, okay, I'm going to send Suge Knight's old lawyers to come in and it's a stick up. Of course, I'm like, this isn't a negotiation. This is a robbery. They want to make it look like I'm greedy. No, they're trying to keep me out of everything. She keeps saying, them niggas over there negotiated my contract. Them niggas are sitting right next to her. T. Ferris is the one. Her mom did the contract. I'm new to the business. I let this guy T. Ferris run my whole business because I knew absolutely nothing about it. Zero. So he wrote your contract up. I didn't do it. They just want to make a big deal about it. We signed the deal. Honor your contract and let's keep doing business how we've been doing and everything is fine. Nobody is trying to rob you. So Billboard asks, when Megan announced her management deal with Rock Nation, from my understanding, you found out the news the same as everyone else, correct? And he answers, the guy T. Ferris, the one who was helping me with my business, he was handling Megan for me. She's a girl, so she, he was used to being a role manager. I was letting him handle all the business, and he said, we're going to Rock Nation. We got a meeting. I said, oh, cool. We're going to go get to meet Jay-Z. I'm actually excited because I get to meet Jay-Z myself, you know. We looked up to this man. I said, what's going on? He said, ain't no big deal. He just finna show us around the building, little small shit. And I'm like, cool, do I need to be there? He was like, nah, you know it ain't that serious. I said, oh, well, okay, cool. I don't go because we're just on tour with her. Me and Megan are perfectly fine at this moment. Next thing you know, I'm on a plane and I'm thinking the whole industry is going to try to take Megan from me, not my homeboy. So I go and link up with Jay Prince, and the next thing you know, the picture is posted up on the internet, and everybody's like, oh, you bitter. No, I was already posting Jay Prince before. When I found out, like everybody else, I got emotional and made one comment. They took that and ran with it. Oh, he's bitter. He's mad. Look, I'm just trying to see what's up. I thought they had enough respect for me to at least tell me something, but it's cool. She don't have to tell me about that, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, tell them what their real plan was. Their real plan was to get you out of my contract so they can sign you to Rock Nation. That's all they want to do. We gave this girl a 60-40 split. Now go ask the artist about that. She got parts of her masters the first time. You think Jay-Z would give her part of her masters on her first deal with Rock Nation? Fuck no. Then she's getting $100,000 a show and she don't want to pay up. That's what the issue was about. She signed with Rock Nation in August and decided she didn't want to pay me no more. They're using that as a strong arm tactic so that I can renegotiate the contract. They're holding the money and they haven't paid me since August. She's done over 15 shows. Y'all do the math. She gets $100,000 a show. She owe me and I haven't recouped almost 2 million that we spent on her, building her up so that Rock Nation would want to come around. Where was Rock Nation at when we was grinding and riding around on them back streets? Rock Nation was nowhere to be found. Soon as we spent our money, blow it up, and all of a sudden, these strangers and people you just met, they introduced you to Beyonce, and now we the devil? 
We were just the angels sent from the sky. Now we're the devil just because Jay-Z saved you. You're so fake. So Billboard asks the next question. It says, on her Instagram live, she repeatedly explained how she viewed her relationship with 1501 as family. You're also speaking on the family bond that you want to share with her. Where did that dynamic get lost in the midst of everything? And Carl answers, everything was cool until her lawyers came in and told me that it was pretty much a stick up. Unfortunately, when her mother died, the snake was able to come in and crawl in position to influence her head and tell her stuff. If her mother would have been here, we wouldn't even be going through none of this stuff. Once her mother died, things changed up a little bit. Everybody that wanted in, all the blood suckers were able to jump in. That's what happened. She got this dude, T. Ferris, right up under her. He's the snake. He did the contract. They had the lawyers. How didn't you read your contract? She signed two contracts. You signed one with me and 300 Entertainment. You mean to tell me you, your mama, and your lawyer didn't read over the stuff every time? Stop lying. You wasn't 20. You were 23 years old. You was a grown-up. You're just a liar. She got 8 million followers that know they can pounce on me because I'm smaller. She knows she's going to win when it comes to that shit right there, but I don't care about that. They can trash me or whatever they do, but the real is you got Hollywood and you got up under Rock Nation and you're acting like you don't have to honor your contract no more. Then you want to say you tried to negotiate. Man, you sent your lawyers in there and they want to take me out. She owed me four albums and they want to offer me one album and take everything away. They're crazy. So then they ask him. How about her claiming that she's only been paid $15,000 by the label? He says, how's she been paid $15,000? As soon as we signed to three hundred, dollars I wrote her a check for $50,000 and it's signed with her name on the check. We can show you the proof. That's another thing. I got all my receipts. They know it. I got all the receipts. We gave her a $10,000 advance when we first signed her and gave it to her mother. I don't know what happened with that. Three hundred dollars gave us a $200,000 check when we first signed. I gave her $50,000 of it. I didn't have to give her that. That was mine at the time. And we never told her no a day in our lives. She just got on some real hating shit or whatever. You just didn't want me around. How can I be mean to you? I never was around you. I didn't do nothing. You barely saw me. So they, um, Billboard follows up and says, she's also claiming that there was a producer associated with the label that threatened physical harm to her, along with a lot of social media attacks being aimed at her from your side. He says, <clears throat> I don't even know about that. I don't even know about social media because I'm getting threats. They're threatening me, my kids, everybody. So look, the kind, that kind of just come with it. I don't know what producer could be threatening her. She lies so much. She tried to say we didn't do nothing for her. Well, I got five hundred to eight thousand dollars worth of receipts that show we did do something for her. So I don't know what T. Ferris is over there telling you or if he did everything because he takes the credit. She likes to give T. Ferris the credit about discovering her. So she's fucking blind by it that she's trying to make it seem like I'm a bad person. Listen, all she has to do is pay me my money. That's all I want. I don't want to be around her. I don't want nothing going on. I just want what's mine. And then they ask, well, let's run through the numbers that Megan is claiming in her lawsuit against 1501. She says that 1501 gets 60% of her recording income. Right. And she gets 40%. Then they say, but she's claiming that chunks of the 40% is being given to third party people like producers, mixers, featured artists, et cetera. Is that true? Nah, I don't think that's true either. It's a great deal. She wants to talk about a bad deal. She's disrespecting her mother by saying that because her mother and T. Ferris are the ones who did it. Those two worked out the deal with the lawyer. I don't even have anything to do with it. And it says, and you guys supposedly get 30% of all her touring money and 30% of all her merch as well. Well, we did a 360 deal where it was a 70-30. The reason why it was a 70-30 was because we gave up so much. We gave up part of her master's right now. We gave up her a 60-40 split. That's why we got so much on that side. We knew we did some stuff that people don't do. This is how I was getting in the business. This is how I got her to sign with us because I wanted to make sure we overdo it. That way we can get her. So she got a great deal. She's just over there with Rock Nation and she's mad because some somebody said something bad about her one time. She's acting like people can't speak their truth, like she's the only one with, that have a truth. If you watch her in her interview, she looks like a little kid that's just being silly. It's like she's not even taking it serious. Look at it. Look at it. Everybody knows she looks so silly te telling everybody, I didn't do nothing here in Houston, Texas, when we sat here and watched it from day one. She's such a fraud. The rest of the world can get mad at me, but they're not in Houston. They don't know how it started. They can call me bitter, but just put it 
this way to your 8 million followers that don't give a fuck about me anyway. If somebody comes and tries to take your shit, you're going to fight back too. It wasn't no renegotiation. It was take this or else. That's why the beef started. And so <clears throat> they asked, when was the last time you spoke to Megan? Secondly, do you feel like this relationship can be salvaged outside of court, especially since you and her both lean on the word family and how you initially valued each other? He said, I don't know at this point because it's so bad. I don't know what can happen. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure that fair is fair. I just want it to be fair. Nobody wanted her to stop her music. I understand that, but she's ignored me since August. I haven't spoke to her since August, and this is what's going on. She hasn't tried to do nothing. She hasn't made one payment since August, and you do the math and see how many months that is and add it up. Anybody would be pissed off. You owe me money that I recouped, and you owe me show money. You owe me damn near $2 million. You damn near in the hole for $2 million, and you want to just get up out of it because Rock Nation told you you could. That's how it is, and she's just young, and she doesn't know the business and how, you re how you're supposed to honor contracts. They want to take advantage of me because I'm new to the business and don't know nothing. This is what Rock Nation do. They harp on the weak. I guarantee you, if I didn't have Jay Prince right now, I wouldn't even be able to talk to you, bro. Rock Nation would have already took this shit. This shit would have already been took from me. All my hard work would have went down the drain. I'm here to fight this. So that's the end of the interview. And now that I have read it through, I honestly can say that I'm kind of on Carl Crawford's side on this. I think that Meg did get Hollywood. I think that Rock Nation came in, tried to swoop in and do what they do as if that they was going to get her some kind of better, as if they was going to do her better. And furthermore, after I read some more about this whole 300, the 300 side of this deal, because remember, she signed to 1501 Entertainment and 300, which is Lear Cohen. Lear Cohen, under 300, which is Theory Entertainment, something like that. It's like a, there's subsidiaries or something like that underneath that label, right? So you have the label, you have some other things under it. They own her name, Meg the Stallion. They own Hot Girl Summer. So when, remember in the summertime when Meg was trying to get all this stuff trademarked and all this stuff? Theory, 300, they own that. Meg doesn't own shit, but the little, the little tips on her nails. Meg don't own a goddamn thing. And so again, whose fault is that? I am truly believing what the dude is saying here. I'm not saying that, you know, the music industry isn't shady. I'm not saying that he doesn't practice any. I'm saying I'm believing him on this one. I'm believing that Meg sat there with her mother and this other dude, T. Ferris, and T. Ferris wrote this shit up. Meg is in a 360 deal, even though she denied and said she was too intelligent to sign anything like that, a 360, because we know we've heard about 360 deals and the rat and, and sheet there and all this other stuff. We heard about how bad they are, that everybody pinch from the pot before you even get a dime of it. And they still sat there and they signed it anyway. So is that Carl Crawford's fault for doing business or is that Meg the Stallion's fault for not reading and not understanding? For not getting somebody to sit down with her and make sure that she understands what she is signing here. And don't get me wrong, we have all signed shit that we probably shouldn't have signed. Hell, I've signed a student loan, I had, you know how we read, we get the little things on our phone where you'd be like, okay, I don't want to read through all of this. Just say, I agree. I understand the terms and conditions and you ain't read a goddamn thing. You just sign it. You don't even know what the hell you sign it. We've all done that, right? So we've all guilty. But when it comes to something like this or sitting down there, you know, signing away like something for a house, I remember sitting with my lawyer. When I closed on my house, I had a lawyer right there reading all this shit, explaining all this shit, because I knew I didn't understand that jargon. I didn't understand that verbiage. I knew I didn't understand that. So I'm blaming Meg's side here. I'm blaming her people for this because she didn't sit here and sign with 1501. She didn't sit here and sign with 300 and they own 300 under 300. They own your name. They own hot girl summer. You can girl. Who, girl, for real, for real, that is the craziest shit to me. So again, it just makes me realize here that Meg knew all of this and Meg 
realized that she made a pretty bad deal on her end. And now she wants Rock Nation to swoop in and fix it. But what makes her think that Rock Nation gonna give her anything better? I mean, honestly, look at some of the Rock Nation artists, you know, under, under Jay-Z over the years. They might have a different take on this Mr. You know, Captain Save them when it comes to Jay-Z. What makes you think that their deals were any better? Hmm? That they weren't owed money as well. That they didn't get some kind of basic um, contract too. I, I do honestly think that Meg got Hollywood and she decided that, you know, the grass was greener on the other side because this is Jay-Z we talking about. And uh, I do believe that these people dumped money into her. They, they, they prepped her up. They got her hot off her talent though, right? She is a talented girl. So it's not like she didn't have any hand in this, but they backed her with, they backed her financially. And now she wants to, she think that the grass is greener over here with Jay-Z and that's what she want to do. And he's out here looking like the bad guy because Meg played the sympathy card and got everybody like, he's the bad guy. He's the devil. He's the devil. When he is just one part of this, remember 300 is headed by Lear Cohen. And if you haven't heard about Lear Cohen, Lear Cohen is always in some bullshit. For years, he's been in bullshit. The white dude. Okay, so why he's not getting, why is he not getting the vitriol? Why people ain't going after Lear Cohen? Why is she not going after Lear Cohen? When he just as involved as Carl Crawford here. You signed a contract. At the end of the day, you signed a contract. She ain't even put out no album yet, y'all. All of this bullshit going on and, and Meg ain't even technically proven such. Like, yeah, she got some hot stuff behind her, but she ain't even put out no album. And she signed a four contract deal with this man. So again, whose fault is that? I really wanted to believe that Meg was sitting here saying she really wanted to renegotiate. I really wanted to believe that. And now I'm just sitting here side eyeing her like, Meg, you tried to play the sympathy card. And you got your little temporary restraining order and the judge said you can put out music. So now what? Now what? But at the end of the day, you signed a contract with this man. So again, now that I have read all of this and we knew it wasn't over a few days ago, now that I have read his side of it and I've seen what Meg has definitely signed into, I don't necessarily think this is his fault anymore. I'm not putting it this at his feet. I think Meg and her people just didn't read they didn't read the contracts and 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 this ain't no excuse at this day and age there's no excuse not to be more informed we've just seen this shit too many times to not be more informed and not do your homework when you are sitting down signing something like this so i just want to put that out there to you guys so that you guys can look at it yourselves and see if you have a different take on it or do you now understand where he's coming from in this i'm going to post a link to the article um in the comments below. And uh, that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to share that with you guys and see what you guys thought about this. And that's kind of it. Um, like, comment, and subscribe and support the channel. And I guess I will see you guys on the next video. But in the meantime, do your homework, y'all. Before you sign anything, do your homework. Take care, y'all.